Welcome to Go. Actually, good go. Get your glasses on. You go. Brought to you by the Alyosha Society because we're still pursuing truth and beauty and goodness through great literature. All right. This is the first one of these in this series you're watching. What, what are we doing here? Time out. First of all, if you have a chance, please go and check out the longer video I made on critical theory. All this stuff will make more to be more helpful to you. If, if you can't do that and you're just feeling a little bit sluggish, you know, today, then at least check out the first video I made in this series. I got kind of an abbreviated, you know, kind of spark notes version there. It'll just all make more sense. But in light of that, I, I want to repeat that I'm not trying to communicate here that I'm, you know, totally anti-critical theory, that there's no value to these approaches to literature like, you know, queer theory or feminist theory or critical race theory. That's not exactly what I'm saying. So check out my video, you know, so you get the details on that. What I am saying is that we shouldn't discount the value of biographical and historical context and getting the most out of what we're reading. So sure, in that regard, I am responding to various aspects of the methodology of critical theory, mainly because I'm concerned about any approach to reading that says, you know, just open the book and, and just kind of let it speak to you. And whatever you pull out of it, that's true and valid and good, uh, because there's no invalid way to interpret literature. I'm uncomfortable with that. It's uh, it's just a sort of a fancy form of uh, relativism. So I'm trying to emphasize here the value of what we call the historical biographical approach to reading literature. All right, now to the specific author in this video, James Joyce. Oh, friends, listen, it seems it seems like everything he did was autobiographical. I mean, listen, Friends, you need to get to know Joyce if you're going to dive into his works. His works, especially Ulysses and Finnegan's Wake, they're already difficult enough. Don't make it harder for yourself. Okay? Joyce, 1882, born in 1882 to a Roman Catholic family, Irish Roman Catholic to the core, you know, educated by the Jesuits all the way until he wasn't. Yeah, which was as soon as he could talk Nora Barnacle into leaving Ireland and uh, running all around Europe with him. And that's really, that's what they did. He met Nora in 1904. And in that same year, they left Ireland. They did not come back to the homeland until after 1912, I think it was. They were together, you know, the whole time, but they didn't actually get married until 1931. Dude, put a ring on it, man. Anyway, what was what were they doing while they were, you know, traveling around Europe? Well, Joyce did some teaching to bring in some income. They lived in northern Italy, Trieste, for uh, uh, some time. And what he mostly did, you know, was write and write and write. Um, after, uh, after he finished writing Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man and Dubliners, he worked on, yeah, check this out. He worked on Ulysses. For seven years, I, honestly, to, to honest, I can't believe he did it in seven years. But you know, there, there you go. He worked on Ulysses for seven years, and here you go. Oops, here you go. The Mount Everest of literature, the book to end all books. Seventeen years he worked on Finnegan's Wake, but hey, you know. No big deal. hundred years later, there's still no one that really knows what in the world it says. I'm just kidding. Uh, no, no, no. We'll do, we'll do a video on, on Finnegan's Wake. I, I gotta, I gotta get some rest and, and kind of gear up for that one, but we'll, we'll eventually do a video or, or two or a hundred on Finnegan's Wake. Okay. Let's, uh, let's get to the bios. I mentioned, um, Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man. This is the closest thing to being an autobiography that you can get. Stephen Dedalus, the protagonist here, is James Joyce. There, there is absolutely no distinction. You know, if you want to know what Joyce's life was like, 
at least I'd say the first 20 years of it, because it, you know, Stephen is is still a young man at the end of the novel, then read Portrait. All right. Now, on top of that, three books I want to mention. You know how with some authors, especially big ones, you know, like Dostoevsky, maybe Austin, maybe Dickens, I'm not sure. But you know how in some cases there is this clear scholarly consensus on what the definitive biography of someone is. So, you know, it's sort of like that with the presidents of the United States, you know. Well, for Joyce, it's Richard Elman. Absolutely, hands down. It is a comprehensive, detailed, uh, a, a remarkable academic achievement. He, uh, Elman spent 20 years doing the research and writing this book, and it definitely shows in the depth of his analysis, his breadth of, uh, of uh, his knowledge. What I like about Elman is that he, you know, he puts forth James Joyce as a very complicated, multifaceted guy rather than merely a literary genius, which he was, in my opinion. He, he absolutely was. What I like also, and, you know, Joseph Frank does this with Dostoevsky, and I really like it when, a, when, a, when an author biography gives me some analysis of the major works, because then then you're getting the life of the author, and then you're getting that analysis in the context of the author's life. And he does that. Elman does that with both Ulysses and Finnegan's Wake. Now, look, I know when you look at this, you know, dull, boring, you know, no cover, whatever. It looks like a, a scary uh, work. It looks like a big, fat, scholarly thing. It's really engaging, though. It's accessible. If I can read it, basically anybody can. Uh, okay, next one, Gordon Bowker. Uh, a number of years ago, I read this biography. It's a more recent publication, but here's the thing. As you can see, it's much shorter than Elman's. If you want to go that route, it's excellent. It's a very good read. I've enjoyed that. I've learned a lot from it, used it in my teaching and so forth. Finally, got kind of an extra cool, fun bonus for you here. Remember how we've talked a little bit about the importance of the spouse, we talked about this a whole lot in the Dostoevsky video, you know, his second wife, Anna, and biographies about her and what she wrote, what she said. This is a good one. Brenda Maddox. Brenda Maddox uh, wrote this one. It's This one is called, I love this book. It's called Nora, The Real Life of Molly Bloom. Now, Molly Bloom is just the fictional uh, character. She's the wife in Ulysses. This is really excellent. If you really want to dig a little bit deeper, uh, or not. Good read. There you have it, guys. Ba bam. Go, go. Get your glasses on. I'd love to hear feedback. I know there are probably a lot of Joyce fans out there, probably hiding. I know, I know. We take a lot of abuse. But if there are any other uh, biographies you'd like to suggest on James Joyce, let me know. I'd love to hear from you. Bruce at AlyoshaSociety.com.